Yeah, and, and we can go ahead and pivot to now that we have the matchup set, really starting to preview this this finals series as a whole. And again, starting with Bam, I think that look, if Anthony Davis couldn't stop Jokic, I don't know if anyone can. Right. Uh, so he's got more than enough of work cut out for him on the defensive side of the ball. And that's just from, from an individual matchup perspective. If they're looking to go zone and Jokic is trying to attack that, they're, you know, I went back and watched some of the Nuggets clips against Miami this past year. And Jokic likes to, especially when they go zone, post up someone on the outside. He'll catch it kind of high on the, the perimeter. And that means he's going to be looking to start his post up against guys like Duncan Robinson or Max Strews or, you know, somebody else on that perimeter. And, you know, Bam then is going to have to try to help off of that. And with how their offense flows with the motion, how absurdly good of a passer Jokic is, I immediately see that presenting problems for Miami. If they want to go zone, if they go man, one on one, I don't know anybody that's stopping Jokic right now. Mm -hmm. And again, that's no shade to Bam, because there's no shade to Anthony Davis either. I think no, anybody are, in the league, there's right. nobody in the league that can do it. So there's no, no. He's just disrespect a, to you. Seven foot bruiser with an incredible finesse and Touch. honestly yeah. ridiculous shot making. It's the dumbest threes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> step back threes, the end quarters. I get no. I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I'm not even get into that. We're, we're not talking about that. That purple and gold team. I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'm very interested to see what Spo brings to the table. But um, another stat that I have here: the the Nuggets were the number one team, number one offense in terms of offensive rating against the zone against any zone defense, both in the regular season and so far in this, this postseason. Um, now, obviously, in this postseason, they haven't faced the Heat's zone, which has been the most prevalent, far and away the best zone defense um, in the playoffs and probably in the league as a whole. Um, but, again, just for additional context there, um, and, and that all makes sense, right, with how good of a passer Jokic is. What you always want against a zone is somebody that can attack the inside and look to, to play make from there. And I don't think you could actually draw or create a better person to do that. Literally. Than Jokic. Mm -hmm. um, so interested to see what, what Spo goes with um, throughout this series. Um, like we've said in a lot of these later series, the chess match is always something that um, we're excited to see. And you're going to have two of the best coaches in the NBA going at it. And, and looking to make adjustments here from game to game. And I, I'm very interested to see what type of schemes Spo is able to, to throw at Denver because you got to throw the kitchen sink at them, right? You, you've got to try everything. And um, even then it might not work. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I'm sure there's going to, we're going to see zone. We're going to see man. We're probably going to see heavy trapping on any type of Jamal Murray uh, pick and roll action. I'd imagine they're going to try to, Let's him get the ball out of his hands, not let him operate freely. Um, there's going to be times where we're going to see doubling on Jokic, especially on the block. Um, like I said, I just don't think there's anybody that can guard him one-on-one -on -one in the league right now. They're going to throw a lot at Denver, and they're going to make them work. But I think I said it prior to game five of this Eastern Conference Finals. I think either team that came out, Denver is just – they're like a – a juggernaut right now. They're a machine. It's They're important. operating on all cylinder operating on all cylinders and now had a week off uh <laughs> after their their sweep in the Western <laughs> Conference Finals. And so they're gonna be rested. They uh I'm sure they probably have been prepping for a heat zone for a couple of days now, just anticipating this being a possible outcome. Right. And so I just I think it's going to be Denver in six games. And I think it didn't matter who it was going to be. It's going to be Denver in six. I'm anticipating that Miami is going to be able to take one or two 
strictly off of like heart. We're gonna <laughs> oh, have great. <laughs> right. It's just gonna be great schemes. We're gonna have force Denver into just an off shooting night, and Jimmy's gonna have like forty five and fifteen rebounds. Um, a Jimmy game, yeah. A right. Miami, not Jimmy game. A Miami Heat game. One of those yeah. like. We, I know what you mean. We're going to slug it out. We're going to steal one. So I, I get what you're saying. It, it's going to be tough because, like you said, none of them can guard Jokic one-on-one. Yep. It's like you go into the zone, he can literally pick you apart with his passing. So it, it's going to be really, really tough. I'm also interested to see how Spolster does, just how, how he schemes up a defense to be able to slow down the Denver offense. Because And it's different going against Denver than it is the Celtics because it's not just, okay, Denver's going to shoot a bunch of threes, and if they're off, then – okay, we win. Like, no, they're a very balanced offense. They can kill you in the paint. They can kill you with shooting threes. They have great shot creators like Jamal Murray who can get his own shot from the mid-range, the three. Like, they can score in so many different ways. They're completely different when it comes to the Celtics. They have a bunch of motion. Like, it's it's a completely different team you guys are going against, being the Miami Heat. But, I mean, if anyone can scheme up some sort of anything to help slow down Jokic, Jamal Murray, this whole offense, it will be supposed to so. Um, I'm curious to see how the, how the series goes. I think I really want to say Nuggets in five. I'm being completely honest with you. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to give. I've been counting the Heat out in every single series they've they've had this whole postseason, and it's it's just tough. They burn me every single time I picked against them. I'm gonna pick against them again. But <laughs> I think I'll give them a little bit of respect. I'll say Nuggets in six. Yeah, I I think. If we've learned anything about this Heat team in this run, it's that there is absolutely no quit. They're never going to lay down. And this this Eastern Conference Finals is telling enough, right? Like, very easily could have packed it in after game six. And they not only came to fight, but dominated the Celtics in game seven on the road. So there's no way they're going to – lie down and just let the, the Nuggets walk over them. So I, I think Nuggets in six feels feels fair. Um, I just – the talent on that Nuggets team is you know, too much. Too much. Yeah. Rested. It's just everything is is skewing in their favor. So um, I still think it will be a, a, an exciting series to watch. Um, I don't care what the TV ratings say if casuals don't tune in and watch it. Oh well, y'all don't really love basketball then. I think that's uh, the media's fault, low key. Hundred percent. It's about how they they uh, advertise and sell some of these smaller market teams that aren't the Knicks or the Celtics or the Lakers, right? Um, it's crazy that, and I think Mike Malone is probably overblowing it to an extent with how much he feels like the Nuggets are disrespected, but some of that is rooted in truth. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they have a two-time MVP and are or have been the, the start to finish one seed really in the West outside of like the first three weeks of the season. Um, the fact that you have reporters coming out and saying, man, I didn't know Jokic was this good. And Jalen Rose is <laughs> he, Rose just is, now entering superstar status. Like, what are right, you talking about? Two bro? MVPs later, <clears throat> two all, first team all NBA, you know, selections later. Now he's a superstar. And it's like, this, like, I don't really see why. I mean, I get why the ratings would be lower than like a Lakers Celtics, obviously. But it's like, if you just look at the stories, it's like, like you said, first team or first seat the entire year, pretty much rolled through everyone in the West. Yep. And you have this Cinderella story in the East over here. It was just grit and hustle and grind. And we're going to win through toughness. And yep. And they have beef. People forget they have actual beef between each other. Like they almost fought when Yogi's tried to almost. I think they Morris. did. <laughs> like he almost and Yogi decapitated the Morris brother. And then Jimmy Butler saying, "Meet me in the back. Meet me in the back." Kyle Lowry want to like they all wanted to fight. Like this team, they have beef. Like this, bro. It, this it goes beef. deeper than that too, because people forget in the bubble, Aaron Gordon and Kyle Lowry got on got into it when Aaron Gordon was still with Orlando. Did he really? He Aaron, did. Right, he did. Oh, they I got know, into I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Lowry, it was perfect. 
Aaron Gordon was like, man, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't this. Kyle right. Lowry said, my room, my room number is 827. Facts. <laughs> Yo, nah, I don't care what nobody say. This could be some, this series could be lit, bro. This series could be something. Like, I, yeah. I, who knows? You guys, you might see some uh, some scuffles here and there, some pushing and shoving, some back talk. It could be something. So, that it's, whole, it's going to be, be a gritty, it's going to be a grinded out series for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't, look, they better get security for Jokic brothers because you know they're gonna be they're gonna be they're in the building sick. in Miami. They got just gonna be in sitting posted up like they're looking with the black shirts in just like that. <laughs> looking like some bouncers, bro. Yeah, the bodyguards are are in the arena for sure. For real. I ain't messing with no big Serbians, bro. I'm straight. Like, they, I ain't they about the no same problem. size as Jokic. <laughs> Even if they're not, they're gonna be at least like what six, seven, six, eight. Right, it's a big Serbians. I'm straight, bro. I'm good. Yeah. I don't want no problems with that. You got it, bro. Right? Yeah. I... Keep that over there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited for the series. Um, I think I'm expecting reports are gonna come out that viewership is down from last year or down from previous finals, and it's gonna be one of the lower. View, lower rated viewership finals that we've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that, like we already said, is due to the media, but some of it is just less people watch sports in the same way that we used to. I think this is a little bit off topic, but I feel like we need to get away from using that as a benchmark for how good a product is or how good a, a series was, how entertaining it was, or how much people are interested in it. Because I would imagine there's probably a lot of people in high school, just like teenage, like probably somewhere between that, like 14 to like 20 age range. A lot of them probably don't watch the games live. They probably go and watch highlights. They go and people listen talk to, about them. They go and listen to the off the glass podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. listen to people talk about it, but they might not sit down and watch the game as it's happening. Um. And that just is a, a viewership habit, a trend among people in that age group. Like they're shifting away from watching on broadcast or stream and shifting to social media, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is. Um, so the viewership may be down, but I don't think that's going to take away from what I think is going to be an exciting finals. There's tons of great storylines here. The media can definitely sell it better and can definitely cover it better because I, the guy from sports illustrated, I think is Chris Mannix. Maybe I don't, I don't want to misquote it, but I know he works for, for sports illustrated came out and said that he thought that the nuggets were a boring team. There's nothing to cover. There's no story for the nuggets, which I think is lazy, just lazy and lousy, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's a two time MVP. That was a second round draft pick on that team. There's somebody on the team that tours ACL and missed, almost two seasons of basketball and has come back and is they're clearly the second best player. One of the best playoff risers we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Right. Michael Porter jr. Played what, like 10 games in college and messed up a disc in his back. And they thought he may never play mm-hmm. basketball again. And he Dropping might be the draft because of it. Right. He might be a third option on a championship team. Aaron Gordon's having a career revitalization, had a completely new role from what he did in, in Orlando Mm-hmm. Now here in Denver, that's just four guys. Bruce Brown, Christian Brown is playing well. A, like there's so many storylines and angles. I don't want to hear that there's nothing to cover. That's just lazy. That just means there's no drama. That's all. That's really what he's talking about. There's no. It's, it's not even. There's no, no drama. off the court drama. There's no like. There's no LeBron. There's no Curry. There's no. That's there's nothing that is. people. It they is don't have no LeBron. No Curry. No, exactly. It's not flashy, and that's also I feel like it is somewhat of a problem. I was listening to J.J. Reddick talk about that a little bit. He was like, do you think the NBA has, like, a LeBron and Curry problem? That, like, once those guys leave, it's like people's going to be like, oh, well, my favorite players aren't in it. Like, I don't really care anymore. Like, there's plenty. Listen, I got family members that's like, he, they asked me, like, did the Lakers win? I was like, no. What are you talking about? They're like, oh. Like, they, they're just LeBron fans. They just right. wanted to know, like, did we win? They didn't. They don't really care. They didn't really watch it. But they know LeBron. They know Curry. They know all these guys. So, I feel like um. The the non ha- not having the flashy names, the big names is part of the reason why a lot of people seem like or feel like they don't really want to watch like the Nuggets, the Heat, things like that. Yeah, it's, it's it's tough. It is what it is. Yeah, and I think 
I, honestly, there's, there's a lot of drawbacks to what social media has done, like on the whole on society, but even just in the sports perspective and looking at the NBA, uh, you have a lot more people that can voice bad opinions, really negative opinions. But what it's also opened up is the lanes to let people have more outlets to choose where they want to interact with the NBA at. Not everything is going to be done, and it's only going to continue to trend in this direction. Less and less people are going to go to ESPN or Bleach Report or any of the larger media outlets for their sports coverage. More and more people are going to probably tune into YouTube podcasts and, and opt to get their, you know, their fill and their NBA content that way. Um, because there's more options, there's going to be different personalities, get different, different feels, different vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's, it has this, you know, it's drawbacks, but I think that's probably one of the more overwhelming positives of, you know, where the social media space is going, the podcasting space, YouTube as a whole. So yeah, that, I hope it gets better. I hope that they give both of these teams their flowers as the, the finals go on because this postseason as a whole, like when we look back on this in a few years, it's just going to be like, this was special. Like this was special what we're witnessing right now mm-hmm. with the, the run that the Heat have gone on and the dominance that the Nuggets have showed. So, yeah, all, all I can hope for is a, a competitive series, a good series, but – um, we both have the Nuggets in six. I just don't see a world where that team loses, man. They look too complete. Like it's just, I just feel like it's a thing of like, there's no need to overcomplicate it. Like, yeah, they're the yeah. best team. They looked like the best team. They've been the most consistent team. They have the best player in the world, arguably. Yeah, yeah I don't see them losing. 